Hey guys, so a few days ago, Ubiquity released the release candidate version of Unified Network 9.1.118. So this is a new version that everyone will be getting soon. There are some awesome updates in it like upgraded multi-WAN support, quality of service changes, and more. But in this video, I wanted to focus on some of the changes that home users will benefit from. These might be viewed as small changes, but I think they'll really change the way you use and interact with your Unify network. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is some Wi-Fi changes. So inside of the Wi-Fi section, if you scroll all the way down here, what you're gonna see is that this is a new section. And the goal of this is to basically allow you to manage your entire Wi-Fi network a little easier than you could in the past. So what you'll see here is that they now have a default Wi-Fi speed section. And what you can do is you can basically select maximum speed, conservative or custom, and then you could customize this and then apply it to all of your access points. Now I just created a video on Unify Wi-Fi optimization and everything in that video still applies. But if you watch that video, what you'd see here is that this is actually a much easier way to manage things than you used to. Now the next is on the access point itself, and this will be quick, but what I really like about this is they allow you to modify the transmit power and either disable it for certain Wi-Fi bands or actually fine tune it. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this right off the bat, but if you watch that video, you'll remember that a lot of this, especially the transmit power, will really change the roaming for client devices. So fine tuning the transmit power is very important. This allows you to take that one step further, so I love this change. Finally, inside of a client device, what you'll see is that there is this new analyzer section. And if you click that, it will give you a full graph for that entire device and where it's connected and disconnected and stuff like that. So what this is gonna allow you to do is look at your devices at a granular level. So looking at this device in specific, I can see exactly when it roamed from access point to access point. I can see the transaction retries, the signal strength, etc. If you watch that video, you would notice this is a huge and helpful change. Now that is on the client device, but for your access points, there's a big change too. So there's this new AirView tab. And basically what it allows you to do is go through and ensure all of your access points are running optimally. So you can limit down exactly what you could potentially be running into an issue with. You can ensure that your AP density is good. You can look at your client connections and see if there are any outliers. But overall, there was information like this that always existed, but I think they're starting to streamline exactly how you can find clients that are having issues connecting, how you can possibly fix those, and then determine easily if it's at the access point level or if it's possibly at the client level, et cetera. And finally, for everybody that's using the private pre-shared key section, this just makes it a little easier than it was. It doesn't function any different than it did, but it does allow you to go in and generate passwords and stuff like that. So overall, not a massive change in this area, but it is easier to use and understand, so a beneficial change. So next is on the switches itself, where you can pull up the switch and you can click to power cycle a specific port if you wanted to do that. But the big changes are in the port manager itself. So everything has moved to the sidebar, which is nice because it just kind of keeps everything in a standardized format. So it's not gonna show any different information, but it is in a cleaner format. However, what has changed is that you can now select multiple ports and you can now rename them. So if you were setting up cameras, for example, and you wanted to name them all cameras, you could do that. Next is the SFP analyzer. So in this dropdown list, if you select the SFP analyzer, you'll be able to see all of your SFP ports. And if I had a problem here, it would tell me exactly what the problem was. And then I could go on and troubleshoot it from there. Now, the next one is a quality of life change because you were always able to do this. They did rename it. But what you're able to do is when you configure a VPN client, rather than going in and having to create a policy, you can come in here directly and you can change exactly what happens for what devices are connected to this. So for example, if I set up a VPN client, I can come in here and force this device to always route through that VPN client. And what you'll see down here is that the verbiage changed. So it's now kill switch. It used to be fallback, I believe. 
And it's just an easier way of understanding it. Basically, if the VPN connection goes down for whatever reason, this device will not be able to connect to the internet. So it's just an easier way to manage this. But rather than having to go in and create policies, this allows you to do it directly from the VPN client. Now it still creates the policy, as you can see here, it's just automated. Now the next one is replacing a device. And to be clear, this isn't the biggest benefit for home users, but my hope is that this is the first of something bigger. So basically what happens is you could get an access point and for whatever reason, that access point might have a problem, you might have to replace it. So right now, what you currently have to do is you have to remove it, you have to re-add it, you have to configure it, et cetera. What you can do now is if you go to that access point, and you scroll down, you can set this replacement device. And then at that point, if you take the new access point and you look at the back, you can get the MAC address of that device. If you get the MAC address of that device and you type it in here, if you select apply, unplug the old device, plug in the new device, it will get the same settings as the old device had. Now, the downside is that as of right now, it has to be the exact same device. So if you were replacing a U7 Pro Max, you have to replace it with a U7 Pro Max and then it will function as expected. But my hope is in the future, and I have no idea if they're gonna do this, I don't even know if it's on their radar, but it would be awesome if you could replace an access point with a newer access point and copy over some of those settings. So for example, like the transmit power for 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands, even though it might not have the exact same features, if it copied over the features that were the same, I could see that being awesome because then at that point, if you had all Wi-Fi 6 access points and you replaced them with Wi-Fi 7, that would be a very easy way to kind of keep your setup the way it is and have it optimized the way it currently is, but then just enhance it with like the six gigahertz band. I don't have any idea if that's something they can even do, but that would be something cool that they could do if it's possible. Now, to be clear, I've been talking about access points, but you could do the same with switches. And this is probably why you can't go from one device to another device, because with switches, it's a lot more complicated. But with access points, I'm hoping that maybe they could do something like that. Finally, for all of my Cloudflare fans, you can now use Dynamic DNS with Cloudflare directly in the user interface here. So basically on the Cloudflare side, you have to go in and you have to create an API token. And I'd suggest that you limit it down to only editing the DNS zones and you specify it for whatever domain you're using. But at that point, it will give you an API token. And from there, you have to create an A record on the Cloudflare side, but you'll come in here and for whatever subdomain you selected with that A record, you would come in here, type in the whole host name, you would also type in the zone name. And then at that point, if you save this, which I did a little while ago, within 30 seconds or so, you'll see on the Cloudflare side that the DDNS host name will be updated. So this is a great way to manage your host names. I'm a huge fan of Cloudflare. Now you do have to own your own domain for it, but if you do own your own domain, in my opinion, this is the place to run it. So I love that they added this. Now, like I said, there's a lot more changes and I'll leave the release notes in the description just so that you could see what some of those other changes are. But these are some of the biggest ones that I think everyday home users will be able to benefit from. A lot of quality of life changes, like I said, but overall quality of life changes that will actually benefit you. So I hope you got some value out of this video. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.